right, I'd like to officially call to order the Tuesday, October 15, 2019 meeting of the Bolton Conservation Commission. As always, we'll start with a roll call. I am Brian Barraby. Hi there, I'm Jeff Bryan. Kip McNamara. William Payne. Rebecca Longbaugh. Excellent. First up this evening, the Bolton Conservation Commission will consider the request. Uh, wait a minute, this is the key part. Uh, the Bolton Conservation Commission will now consider the request for a, for a certificate of compliance submitted by Robert Pace regarding the completion of a single family home located at 258 Hudson Road, also known as Lot 18, as part of the Keys Farm subdivision. So they wanted to get this one completed relatively so like quickly it. so that they can sell it and then uh, move on with the rest so of it. So did they leave the, you know, when they do the straw waddles which were all around, they just leave those? No, there. they'll pick They're that up. Take so those once up. it's part of the order of conditions that they have to leave those in place For, until okay, they receive yeah. the COC. But then they'll take those up because they were, they still were out. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and they posted the, oh, yeah. that was. Um, they posted the conservation boundary. Typically, we do it every 100 feet, but because these stretches are significantly less than that, or you just have one, um, they did it a little bit more frequently, just so people know not to encroach. You can see that out there. I saw the yellow. So they're the small, yeah, they're facing that, yeah. into this property. Oh, I just noticed. I noticed they put yellow, yellow markers all along the trail, but I didn't see them. They're facing the other way and on the outside of the trees on that lot. Uh, any concerns that you had as far as issuing the order? Anything you saw missing? No, I didn't see anything missing. Um, the only thing that they um, did, and this is not this isn't the plan actually, I apologize. So on the as 
built, it shows actually how the driveway comes. So the driveway comes right here instead of to the front like that, which there's not a significant issue with that, and he came in and requested that before. Um, but that's it, and I had no problems with that. The only thing, and DPW addressed it throughout the permitting process, was that there was some cooling at the bottom here, and I believe in the beginning that it washed into the roadway, but that's a DPW yeah, that's jurisdictional it. item, so once they were able to sign off on it, it wasn't an issue because it wasn't pulling and coming either way. It was pulling and coming out. Let's make sure the last but now that's not an issue anymore. Right. Other questions, concerns, thoughts? Anybody here comment on this? Okay. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we order a certificate of compliance for uh, lot 18 moderator way. Uh, or also known as 258 Hudson Road. I hear a second. Sure. All right, all those in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. And just to be clear, it's a complete certificate of compliance because this was filed separately from the entirety of the subdivision. Right. This so we don't have to do partials. <laughs> Conservation Commission will now hold a public hearing under the provisions of Mass General Law Chapter 131, Section 40, and then the Bolton Wetland Bylaw Chapter 233 to consider the request for determination of, uh, of applicability filed by Kurt Plant and proposed grading at the re rear of an existing barn located at 269 Harvard Road. So I think everybody had a chance to. Not this time. I don't think you saw it this time. No. Uh, so this time we're it's part of the same project. Um, we were here last. We're just looking to fill in a low lying area behind the rear of the existing uh, one story barn that uh, is approximately I think fifty by eighty, eighty feet this way and about fifty feet wide. I was, yeah, I was able to go out. Um, I was going to ask him, do you guys want to have any you know, questions, thoughts? Got no problem. Seated with poison ivy, are Seated with poison ivy. You actually <laughs> should have <laughs> seen it. It's just going to grow up again. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. It's like you look at it right now. We need some practice for hiring the goats out. I, don't, I didn't have any, see anything. Yeah. It's just that was. Marked out. Yeah. Okay. Well, and, and again, it still has the uh, the driveway buffer. Yeah. On the side going towards the wetland. I have, the most part. I have a problem with it anyway at all. Uh, Rebecca, did you have question? No, I didn't have any problem with the grading. Um, and the fact that it seems that there would be a vegetative buffer between the I'm going to call it the paddock area, but the area that's being graded and the driveway. Correct. It'll add a little bit of just naturally occurring road yeah. control, especially if animals are going to be there stirring up or creating a bare area every now and again. Um, that was really my main concern was making sure that it wasn't all the way over to the edge of the right. slope. Right. Yeah. Right. I never problem. Um, so, I, I need to see my negative options, right? Sorry. It's probably
first of the committee motion that we close the public hearing for 269 Harvard Road. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I think oh, it would be yeah. three, three or five, but five doesn't really, I think three. three is probably our better. And we don't have any, discuss any special conditions. I would just say erosion control. Yeah, the proper erosion controls are in place before we do any work. Mm -hmm. All right. I'd like to make a motion that we have a negative three determination um, for the request for applicability for 269 Harvard Road uh, with the following condition uh, that appropriate erosion controls be in place uh, prior to the beginning of work, prior to the start of work. Do, do I hear a second? I second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. And like throughout the work too, not just before the work? No, <laughs> not just, yeah. Okay. Just and they it. remain in place. Yeah. You know, I've never had someone try that on me. <laughs> because in the so order of conditions it's written, that like to remain in place and be maintained, but in the RDAs, it's not always there. Not clear. We'll have to next time. We'll have to get this one in. Yeah. What was it? What was it? Common. We said yeah. put erosion controls in place before they start. I'd like to work. ask. Yeah. Is it possible? Um, Full time they're doing it. Yeah. The customer had a uh, rush hog attachment to their Kubota, mm -hmm. and the Kubota is uh, not starting. Straw waddle in. I won't strip the whole area, but I can you know, at least get down there to strip a path to make the straw so waddle. Oh, in. to put it in? To yeah. put it in. Yep. I think that's. Uh, yeah. No, you have to use scissors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we to die off this summer and next spring get that waddle in place before it regrows. Bill, do you have that second? I can yes. This is law. Are they planning on redoing that whole barn to make it stable to keep yeah. the? Well, that's a good thing. Yeah, they're trying to take care of the water first. Yeah. Go on to the next so project. Phases, yeah. yeah. So let's take care of your mother. Yeah. She arrived. <laughs> she arrived. She know how to drive a steam shovel. <laughs> Saturday or Sunday for a couple of days. Drive the Kubota. fine. <laughs> you out there this week. It seems odd. <laughs> we can come by. And yeah, maybe we'll stop by and bring, bring, some, your, bring some coffee along. Yeah. Well, uh, my plan would be to try and get the erosion control on Monday. Okay. Um, well, because I'm leaving town for a few days uh, tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, Saturday, so I'll be able to do that little pathway on Monday morning, and then they can, I'll call in tomorrow for them to install it. Are you here for something specific tonight? Because we're kind of open there. I'm just here to observe today. Oh. I worked on a merit badge, and part of it is taking part in the uh, town meeting, so I'm here for that. He is also the Eagle Scout, but is doing a wonderful job installing a kiosk and a bridge on Game War. Mm -hmm. The bridge, I think, is already done. Yes. That's a great bridge. Yeah. yeah. It's the awesome. one with the stripes. Yeah. Right. I like running across that one. The, uh, 
<laughs> we were out there the other day. I just noticed there were two holes in the ground that the kiosk was yeah, where it was so going to be. Right, yeah, a piece yeah, of plywood. Yeah. I said, this is a kiosk, a piece of plywood, and two holes in the ground. Yeah. But I'm sure it needs more work. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get that. <coughs> well, thanks for joining. Yeah. Yeah, I think you took our, like, our, just like our shortest agenda ever. Do we have, a, uh, we have an opening for a member? No. No. Actually. Next year. Next year. Next year. Register to vote. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you can come every meeting. Yeah. yeah. All right. Don't uh, get too excited. Yeah. It's We're going to go off to college. Yeah. yeah. Uh, did you really see? That's good. Yeah, yeah. That's a good experience, too. wasn't sure if he was going back for his master's. He was trying to find a job, but he, I forget what he, he was landscaping. Hmm. Landscape tech. But it was the same thing. It was like it was a perfect time for him to join. Like, he graduated. Free time. Mm -hmm. and it's, yeah. it's good experience. Yeah. Like, right. Find an expensive college to go to. Yeah, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not hard to do. Yeah, no. Well, no. Well, I mean, you have to talk. Yeah. Where, are you going, where are you looking to go? Nichols College in Dudley. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, all right. We have a bunch of minutes to approve. I know. Do we have a quorum of one of them? Pete, the for the last one, we should, okay. right? For the October 1st? Did we? Yeah, right? Yes, because it was the four of us. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And then the other ones, I think we need other people for. Is that it? Yeah. All right. All right. So, in that case, did everybody have a chance to look through the minutes from last time? Yes. Yes. Anybody have any problems, questions, corrections? Nope. All right. Let me. Are you sure? No, I'm not sure, but I I'm did read it. Do I take another minute? No. <laughs> I read it, but the best of my memory is that everything seemed to be. Okay. Yeah, number four in the back didn't have a period at the end. <laughs> really? Does it not? It probably doesn't. Those comments are getting pretty good. I mean, the bottom number four. Oh, you know what, though? The numbering is not right. Yeah, no, it goes to three, four, yeah. five, six, three, four, five. So, I will resolve that error. Do you want us to vote on that? Yep. that? Okay. On the front, you got one, two, two. That's what, I'm, that's what I was saying is the numbering is messed up. Yeah. Yeah. So you're right, I didn't. So you can amend with, approve with the amendment if you wish. Let's do that. Yeah. Well, let's, we'll try. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the minutes for our October 1st, 2019 meeting with the following amendment that the numbering of agenda items be set to correct numerical order. A second. second. Hey. All, right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So approved. Um, all right, we have a few things now. Is there one place you would like to start? Yes. Um, Go ahead. Fairly few things that are quick first. Um, the APR workshop at Shartner Farm for October 19, 2019 from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. has been canceled. And that was a decision that Sudbury Valley Trustees and myself decided because we did not get as overwhelming of a response as they would have liked, but to, given the time of the year and how everyone's very busy, at least from our target audience, um, we think it's a good idea. But we will be holding the event, just we're working on a new date and a new time when it's not peak harvest season. Um, in addition to that, there is, though, in case you're looking for something to do on October 19th or the 20th, there will be a work party at Bower Springs. I will be there October 19th in the morning, which will be fun, and I heard that they will be cut out afterwards. I don't know which day, though, so you have to However, they're cooking goats. So they're having goat burgers, I was just going to say. So. It starts at 9 a.m. Really my, my goats will not go to the barbecue. <laughs> we want the goats to come. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's got the draw. Oh. Yeah. Not these guys. The workday will start at 9 a.m. on both days and go until 3 p.m. So people can come and go as they please. They can stay the whole time. Um, Larry so will be so running So 3 p.m. In, in the afternoon? Yes. Okay, I'll yep. get that. Might not be till noon. Did, did they get a better day Saturday? Did they get, 
Uh, did they get to go vote in? Rebecca will be there Saturday. I will be there That's Saturday. That's the drive for Saturday. That's yes. just celebrity guests. There will be food. Breakfast got to go somewhere. Breakfast and barbecue. Well, I might bring some sort of breakfast food. We have an early bird. I think it will be Saturday. We might not be there. Special guest. Conservation minister. Rebecca and the Sunday special guest will be Lance Stewart Chapel. Yeah. Ah. So you can play a marvelous special guest you want to work with. Um, and then for we so there was a project that was permitted and issued in order of conditions associated with DEP number one one two six oh nine, which is the house which is a single family home located at one one four one Main Street between basically DPW and Fox Run. The only house on the right side, actually, excuse me, the high school in Fox Run. There's only one yeah. house on that stretch. Um, they going, had going a west. yes, yes. They had a personal hardship um, that led to them, unfortunately, being financially hurt. One of their contractors essentially left them in the dust. Um, never completed the work on the septic. So now they're financially able to hire someone again and get um, that work completed. So they've requested that we do allow them to continue the work. So Brian had authorized me, being the chair, to issue the emergency permit to allow that work to continue. Um, just as a FYI. And we also have some good news though. We have the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program, which I have been tasked to apply for mm -hmm. by our town administrator, which is very exciting for me because there, coincidentally, I attended a workshop that was just explaining, it had people present from the planning grant, which is what we're applying to, and the action grant phase. So the action grant phase is obviously what you do with that plan that you're creating. Their, their preference is nature-based solutions, which is very interesting. Um, so as we finalize the app, as I finalize the application, and as we move into the planning stage, if and when we receive the grant for the planning grant, then we'll start thinking about, okay, what nature-based solutions can we use? Where will they work? Where won't they work? Um, these are areas similar to the hazard mitigation plan. So where we're seeing potential impacts or actual impacts from climate change and then projections into the future on how it will be impacted. So urban heat islands, which we don't have too much of. Um, we have flooding. Some areas may, because of our wells and our septics, we may want more trees to be encouraged. So this can be applied to bylaw reviews. It can be applied to infrastructure improvements. So it applies to a lot of different things, but um, it'll be the similar core group of the hazard mitigation plan. So what I would respectfully request from all of you is if you would sign a letter, which I will read in a minute, because I didn't realize we should be reading letters that we're signing. Um, at meetings, the board of selectmen and the letters just in support of applying to this grant. Board of selectmen have already issued their letter in support. Nashua River Watershed Association will be doing the same, and the regional planning um, committee will also be doing that. So the letter states uh, the Bolton Conservation Commission, here and after the commission, hopefully, will vote unanimously. unanimously at their October 15, 2019 meeting in favor of fully supporting our town's application to engage the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program. The commission also fully supports working with others in the town of Bolton to become a more resilient community. Locally, we are not experiencing direct impacts of sea level rise, but Bolton is a farming community with a recently designated National Wild and Scenic River, numerous streams and significant wetlands. 
This land use and these natural resources only solidify the importance of considering stormwater flow and flood levels. It has been forecasted extreme storms will be received at a higher frequency, established resulting in increased water runoff, causing an increase in peak flows, and the forecasted increase in size and area of the 100-year flood area. The increase in frequent high-velocity storms or other unpredictable weather events result in the protection of wetlands and floodplains being of chief importance. Specifically, these resources, which have the capacity to absorb floodwaters and retain water in drought situations, will become more essential to protect human interest in water resources and the built environment. It is very likely that climate change will amplify current environmental challenges Bolton is faced with. The challenges such as the spread of invasive species, loss of native plants and wildlife, the fluctuating weather patterns and changing of expected seasonal weather events will result in added stress to some native plant species. Some species will be more vulnerable to various threats, whether deer browse, loss of pollinators, habitat fragmentation, as individuals move away from the coastline and change in the success rate of agricultural commodities. The change in climate is also likely to bring new diseases and pests to our area, further stressing the species currently occupying the area and damaging agricultural crops. We appreciate the opportunity to join with others in Bolton and support an assessment and planning process which will help identify the most significant challenges Bolton must address. Okay. Good. Do you see the threat to drought? Is as severe as threat to you know, high water flow, high, high rain. Yeah. I do. Do you want to stress that more on that one? I can. Um, you said drought once. I did say drought once. But I'm talking about the unpredictable weather events, high velocity storms. That's not just precipitation, that's wind, that's snow, that's no precipitation, I guess, but mm, I guess it can be. No, that's fine. Though. I know what you're saying. Yeah, though. yeah it, I can try and I, rework something in it. I do think that, this, that the events, whatever they are, are going to be a lot worse. Right. Or you know, whatever they are. Uh, the, the trouble with drought is we had a pretty bad drought three years ago. Yeah, yeah. but the, right. the, the drought, but the trouble with drought and, and trying to compare it to a a windstorm or a rainstorm is that drought just is so slow moving you don't notice it till it's dry. Yeah. Right? That's what drought is, right? Right. Yeah. But I think at that point Bolton had a water resource committee or something like that. That's when they yeah. decided to start yeah. one. Yeah. I'm not sure what the result of that was, but that made tiny what we're talking Yeah, about. because we all suck water out of the same pond. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that must have been aquifers from right. the one over by the Bolton Flats, but right. yeah. Um, Boy, we'll take it. So, I guess we will do a roll call vote okay. uh, in support of sending the letter. Okay. Um, and I would say uh, we'll do a good old yay or nay. And uh, yay means we're in support of the letter as drafted with possible minor edits. Um, on behalf of the commission to be sent to the executive office of energy and environmental affairs. Sounds important. All right, so, uh, hey, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, 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 so, yeah, so yeah, 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 a name specified on it, or do you want the chair to just sign off on behalf of the commission? It's up to you. It does not matter in technicalities or anything. Is there a rush to get it sent in? Um, it's a rolling application, so technically no, because we're waiting on two more letters, but it would be preferred if we can have it addressed by the last week of October. At, at the minimum, it should be you and Brian. Yeah, but I mean, if everybody, if everybody has a chance to sign it, I think it always looks better. Yeah, I, don't I always think it's better so. if we can get everybody, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I can do that because then when I make the minor edits, do we sign it electronically? 
we're going to do a load kit to that. But everybody does that these days. Can we sign it for other people? Can I sign it? Yeah, can I sign it for Brian? Just for the for the record, that was, for the record, that was his idea, not not mine. I know. I know. Um, so the last two items, um, both about Bower Springs. So the first item is something I would like the commission to lay on in on this evening. The second portion, we can think about it throughout the winter, not throughout the winter, but by next calendar year. I would like to have the commission's thoughts on it or more concrete thoughts on it. Um, so the short, the shorter term question is, and I apologize, I don't have a better visual. The commission previously voted to allow rail ties that were donated um, by Bolton Orchards to be put to delineate parking spaces at Bower Springs. Talking with DPW and our wonderful volunteer land steward and our other volunteer who's championing this area um, or this property, I should say, and the projects associated with it. After doing some layouts and testing things out, they've requested that they move the edge of the parking area, which is where those rail ties will be, an additional two feet. So not, no removal of any trees, no um, additional paving, they're not resurfacing that area at this point, it's just putting the rail ties. The only issue is it's getting closer to an isolated area there, um, and it is beyond what is currently paved, but not beyond where people currently park. Um, Once we get that answer, they can start installing them. If we can't move an additional feet, two feet out, the, well, the difference between the two is we can have, on both sides of the parking area, we can have people pulling in and parking versus one parallel parking and one pulling straight in and parking, which is what it re would result in if we don't, they don't gain the additional two feet for that parking area. So, my thought is it's not necessarily a goal to increase parking, but the other thought is it is one of our most heavily used parking, so, I mean, one of our most heavily used properties, so do we just accommodate that and create those two parking areas, give the additional two feet, or do we leave it as is and just limit it to the parking that is there now. I think it's a good thing when people get out. So I think we increase the parking if we can. Give them two feet. You think it helps define the area? I think, because the picture in the air, like you said, people park there anyways, and they're gonna yeah, continue really to want. park there, but I, I think if we give them the two feet and put a railroad tie there, that really does define, yeah. like nobody's gonna try to park on the outside of it. Like we really will set a boundary. Yeah, and to be clear, and I'm not one way or another, but the rail ties would be there whether we do the two feet or not. Two gotcha. Feet. I just wanted to clarify that. Gotcha. I think based on that. Yeah. I, I would think the two feet are yeah, two. fine. Like I said, with the amount well. that that gets used and just to help clear up that parking situation in general. Is that really all it takes to solve the parking problem? No. no. So this is step <laughs> one. <laughs> and some monitoring is going to happen and we're going to assess what actually occurs and then we'll revisit. Um, but right, so there's no. I don't have an issue with it. Okay, no. so we're good with the two feet. Yeah. Two feet's good. I'm fine. Two feet is like that, right? Yeah. Big feet. Yeah. yeah. That might be three feet, close to 36 inches to the table. Right, there's 36 inches the table, right? It's close to it. Close enough. Yeah. Um, so great, thank you. The second question I've been receiving a lot of inquiries about fishing at Bower Springs. Um, typically we don't encourage fishing on our conservation properties, but after reviewing, which it will be up on the website, hopefully in another week or two, 
for each of the conservation properties, what I've done is I've gone in and looked at the deed restrictions or um, when land was donated to the town or when it was acquired, what are the restrictions that go beyond just having it being held under conservation or if some of them go beyond the conservation restriction, if it's a formal conservation restriction. Um, this property doesn't have a lot of specifications outside of our general conservation rules and regulations for conservation land. So this is one of the properties we could do it, and this is one we receive a lot of feedback on in terms of allowing fishing or a fishing event. I've had a few um, Boy Scout leaders reach out to me about that kind of an event or holding that type of an event. In addition to the Tom Denny Nature Camp, at the end of this past year, one of their counselors reached out and their supervisor to say, can we take the kids fishing? Um, typically we say no during Tom Denny Nature Camp just because of lures and fishing line and they're in the water during that time. But I think in general, an event like that where it's relatively controlled, we reach out to environmental police officers, mass wildlife, have it be a catch and release, sort of fishing derby, limit the amount of people. Are you gonna stock the pond? There's already a fish? lot yeah. of fish in there. So by fish, there's sunfish? There's sunfish, Blue there's fish. bass. So, so yeah, it's good for the kids. Yeah, and I think, like I said, involving those other organizations would be a really nice outreach event too. Yeah. Um, not only educational. No, oh, yeah, I think that, yeah, I think it's a great idea. So, um, that's not, I'd like to put it on the agenda more formally as a vote if we do yeah. want to request that kind of event, but I just wanted to put the feelers out there now that we're at a meeting that we can discuss a little bit more of the. Would this have to go before the trust or the no. town meeting or any of that kind of stuff? No. So it's just internal because between we, us. Unless there just were. Internal between us, basically. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Unless there were funds or unless we need a police detail for something where we have parking areas so we wouldn't need that. Um, so if somebody has a fishing license mm -hmm. and one is down there with his two kids, mm -hmm. we don't have a problem with that. If it's not during Tom Denny Nature Camp. And that's basically July, right? Yeah. From July to mid-August. Yeah. Um, um, so, but we would want to do it, like I said, in an in event yeah. Basis versus saying no, go. Yeah. Um, What's wrong with just go, except for certain you know, periods of time? Well, so and that's just it is making sure that during if you during, start during. it during event type situation, you can say you know we're going to encourage this, but we want you to be aware that during this time there is a camp going on, there's waiters going on, so it's more about sharing that information. Right, so should be fishing when the camp's going on. So check right. those first. Can they fish in April or in like September? Yeah. Oh, that's good. The commission okay. wants I to say agree that. With that. Ice fishing? No, I think it's good for the kids to get out of the uh, Yeah. Well, and that's the other thing is, you know, and that's something that we can talk about too as time goes on is. Do Was anyone allowed skate veils? Can you go skating on those ponds? And yeah. I guess. I guess. People yeah. cross country ski over it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I assume it's the same. Um, but yeah, so I will put that on an upcoming agenda more as a formal request. So there, has but there been no fishing there for all these years? It no hasn't <laughs> been encouraged. It's right. been more of a policy. So the local kids might get out there and fish anyways. Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. Yep. Um, I was on the property last when, Wednesday, last week sometime. And oh, that was the other thing. We have an individual going out who's not in compliance with the dog rules and regulations, very much not so. And I had to request for her to leave the property. She didn't leave right away, so I just waited until she left. Um, but no altercations or anything like that. But anyways, while I was there, there was a 
a young boy just fishing and caught a sawfish needed help taking it off the hook. So I was like, okay. That's good. Yeah, so it was good. And he's turning 12 next year, so I reminded him that he's going to have to, he gets the chance to get his fishing license next <laughs> year. <laughs> um, so and that's something too, it's just to get kids excited about it. Uh, can I ask the dog walker commercial or a resident? So, I was, I've already talked to this individual on another property, and this person has been at Bower Springs multiple times and typically will notice when I'm on site and she'll actually go to get out of her vehicle and then clearly see me get back in her vehicle and drive off because of the amount of dogs she has and the lack of control over all of the dogs that she has. Um, I approached her on another property. She said, yep, I do this for work. You know, I didn't realize there were rules and regulations. And that was just when we had first put them created those and put them in place. So I said, okay, enjoy your time. But next time, you can't do this. How many dogs? Um, at Bower Springs, she had eight dogs with eight her. Eight dogs? Yep. She did <clears throat> have another person with her. Um, but this time they claimed that they were all her dogs or friends' dogs, and she was just being a kind person and walking them. <laughs> Even though previously she had told me she had a service. Um, so I just reminded her of rules and regulations and that they're posted at all of the trailheads. She proceeds to tell me she doesn't read them. And I said, well, you know, that doesn't mean they're not there. So please. Them to leave. You're being told verbally right now right. by a town official. Yep. Yeah. Um, so we certainly had a conversation, but like I said, she wasn't abrasive in any manner, but she wasn't necessarily Friendly. going on her way. Okay. I thought it was from Harvard or Sudbury. So. I sure know. I didn't ask this time, but I forgot last time where she said she was from. Um, but so it sounds yeah. like we'll put that. I'll put that. Sounds like that's something people are okay with in general. The water fishing? Yeah. Yes, I'm okay with it. Yeah, we do. I think okay. so. Like, like I said, for a long time, since we've said this a million times, we'll say, like, if ours is our most used, I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's where the public yeah. will go. It would seem like that's the place. I just think it should be clear. It doesn't actually say it on the sign. It says no trapping, no hunting. But yeah. it doesn't yeah. say no fishing. And, and something I think because of the erosion that's going on, because we're installing the trail mm -hmm. to reduce people from walking on the erosion, it may be beneficial to, once that trail material is dispersed, mm -hmm. to potentially point out on our maps locations where we would like people to, to fish. enter the, um, yeah, if they're the, the, the um, banks. The banks, thank you. So that it's not causing a bigger issue. I, uh, now that we have a uh, Boy Scout here, we do have a, another opportunity for an Eagle Scout project we over do? at Keys Farm. Yeah, we need a we need a um, kiosk there at the end of that new trail, don't we? Uh, I I don't know. Yes, but I believe I have to look and see what the um, planning board ordered them to do because it may be. Maybe they problem. said just to hear. You were here, the smaller signs being yeah. up versus the big kiosks, but I'll double check that. The, the other thing I noticed putting over there that, that you probably need to put a, uh, to be proactive, put a dog thing there too. Not, not the, but that could become a pretty good dog place because of the location next to the, where, the, where the, the big development is. Oh, you're saying you know, yeah. You know, yeah. You might want to put a dog thing or sign in there. And the other thing I thought, I, I haven't actually, and, and a lot of these trap, uh, all these places, we do like to always promote pack it in and pack it out, but I don't ever see any, except at Bowers, a place to throw trash. Yes. You know, they have a five shift too, but that because overflows. Want people to pack it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I know, yeah. I know. I mean, it's just, it was just a thought when I was looking at it of ways to improve that parking lot, parking area. Yeah. Because you know, it looks like it, 
you know, not many people know we're going to have a um, oh, yeah. a trail walk on the twenty on Friday. We're going to oh be, no, that's a private one. A private one on Friday. We're hoping to invite all of the people from the Conservation Commission and the Trusts and mm -hmm. the Advisory Committee oh, right. to come and take a little walk on that. Although I haven't sent the email out yet, but um, and on the twenty sixth, which is Saturday, yeah. did you do a um, I sent notice? It to you, so you could send it out. Yeah, I haven't sent. I haven't sent. So it Jeff will be leading the walk on Saturday. Yeah, will he follow me? I will be leading the walk on Friday with the assistance. Of yeah, we follow follow this. We have to get those. That's on my agenda to get out this week. To get out an email to everybody. Okay. It is a you know I've walked it twice now. I walked it with by myself and I walked it with Gordon. Last Saturday, it's a nice, it's a nice trail, you know. It's, it's but it's marked. It it needs to be marked back. They marked it going out, okay. and when you're coming back, the arrows are on the other side of the trees. Yeah, but it sort of is a lollipop loop, mm -hmm. yeah. and it comes back out. But you can also spin off at a certain spot and go up to Bar What's the name of that hill? Barrett's Hill. Yeah. Well, you have to go on the power line. You have to go on the power line, but the path is there. But it does dip into a little, looks like a little wet spot, but it does, you can see where it circles up to uh, another spot where it goes into the woods, it goes up Barrett's Hill. So it's, it's, it's pretty nice and trail. So know? the only disclaimer I have about the power line is it's an easement over private property. Yeah. So uh, at your own risk. At your own risk, yeah. Um, but yeah, the, there's a conservation property that's very close nearby. Yeah. In addition to that the sort of links yep. into it. It's pretty nice. So oh, these trails go over private property. Does the landowner know it, or do you, so do you contact the landowner? When we are grading trails or doing reconnaissance, reconnaissance on old trails, and there's a spur that goes off on private property, we do reach out to the property owner and say, "Do you Can want me. an X on our maps that show your private trail, or do you want to allow people to continue and then get it in writing?" Um, at least for the past three years, that's what it's been going on. For what Jeff's talking about is it's a power easement or a utility easement. So it's technically not allowing public access, but people do use it just because it's a it's a gas line, right? Yeah, people use it anyway. Yeah, yeah but so that's at, we don't have permission to use that, and that's why I was just saying the disclaimer because we're not encouraging people to use that, but at the same time, if someone were to use it to access the other conservation property, it, it really does well. connect. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a really good way to do it. Well, you know, even a but powder, not, even no, a powder no, I'm not encouraging it, yes, but it's, it's a really good way to well, get from one to the other. So that's yeah. a good example. That's a different situation where you have an easement over public property. Yeah, so, so it's the other way around over there, but the gas line does, it goes down, it goes yeah. down through there. But I don't see any, and it, you never see any signs. Sometimes you see signs of motorcycles and other things. Yeah. Those things. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see that there. Um, on May 19th, I mean October 19th, I'm at the MACC meeting nice. in Ayers. Yeah. So I'll grab up any stuff I can get my hands on, any chat skis, and I'll bring it to the next meeting. And if any other board members are interested in going, when? Yeah. Saturday? It's Saturday. It's in Ayer. Ayer, yes. Pretty close. Yeah. The goats are busy that day. Yeah. I don't think the goats are invited, but they will be. Well, the goats are close. Yeah, yeah. No, they love the goats. Yeah. But it's, I'm going up to that. The, the, the two things I'm doing, it. one is about planting trees in urban areas. I can't remember what the other one was. But. Do we ever, like, on Earth Day or something like that, give out trees? Yes. Yeah. We do. Since I've been here, we've done seedling plantings on Earth Day with the local library. Yeah, and I wonder how many of them have actually survived seedlings. I have four seedlings in my garden growing two larches yeah. and a dogwood tree that I, that I took along. And the guy, I gave the dogwood tree to the guy across the street. His is growing. Yep. The maple tree didn't make it for some reason or other. I don't know why. Yeah, I know. You think that one, yeah. they're the ones that grow like yeah. in the driveway for pizza. Oh, yeah. 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 Just drop them, drop them in the ground yeah. and they grow. Yeah. This one didn't I've got a bunch of um, what are they? Butternuts and black walnuts. Oh, I know. I'm not planting yeah. that I want to get going. Mm. Anyway, I'm sure that was fun. Start getting those seedlings together. Those, yeah. those seedlings. I'll take those. 
might want to you know, do a little planting on a trail somewhere. Yeah, we might do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, next time. But Did that's that's next April, right? Maple, maple, I mean, sugar maples out on the trails would be great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you can, if we have them out there enough to be able to spike them. Gotcha. I don't know. I don't know that you can actually harvest sugar maples. Syrup on conservation land, they frown on you for taking um, logs. Well, <laughs> big thing too. That it's is not a commercial <laughs> venture, yeah. yeah. Um, Weston has a really cool program. Yeah. Oh, do they? Yeah. The Weston and Weston. Are they tap and boil? I think it's Weston. They do. They have a sugar house. Is that across from like their middle and school or something like that? Yes. And field, they yeah. do harvesting with their own logs. They have a program where volunteers come, split the wood, and they have it. Is it their DPW place on Route 20? They have a nice little spot, um, but the DPW doesn't do it. Right, yeah, you know, I've seen it, I didn't know what it was. I personally would love to do that. So do what? No, we should come do that. I know, yeah. I'm still yeah. putting out here. The, the real problem is getting the heck out of there. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what, they have... I mean, when we have storms, there's down trees all over these roads, right? Right. If the DPW is picking them up, it's well, a good thing to do with it, right? Is yeah. that bring that to the dump or a landfill or something yeah. like that? They do at times have <coughs> like a pile that people take from. But Where? It's not all the time. It's That's the transportation. Yeah, yeah but not it's not. Bad idea. In Weston, they but actually. It's like branches. It'd be nice if we could cut them up and split it and you know, give it to right. them. Maybe there's retired people in town that would like wood or something like that. Yeah, in Weston, they. Not retired people. In Weston, yeah, they. I was going to say, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking, you know, some, some, some you know, older yeah. woman who can't cut firewood anymore. Well, we have the bonfire every year too, right? So well, you know, in Weston, in Weston, they have a um, a uh, composting area where they collect all. They have a dumpster that collects all of the um, brush and leaves and everything else, and then they take it to a place across from the common, across from where the garden, the town garden was. And you know, you, you know, and, you, and it was a massive, you know, composting thing. If you're winning. You know, grab, grab your, your own. Hands. But here, they, I was surprised that they did because I, when I first moved, I asked the people at the. Uh, I said, "Where do you, do you, what do you do with the leaves that fall on the ground?" I said, "Well, I'll throw them in the woods. You know, throw them on the conservation commission properties." Yeah. So I said, "No, that's not a good idea." But put a big pile of spot like that. Like, a good idea. Yeah. Well, I think take, composting take is a good idea. They want out of it, right? Yeah, but it's where where you put it, and they do have something at the. At the at the recycle center, they do have brush piles in there. Yeah. So they, they have a place for leaf collection, leaf collection, nope. for compact, no nope. compost. No, nope. no, nope. not in this town. We we had some guy a year ago come in talking about fertilizing lawns to mm -hmm. whatever happened with that. We kind of just forget that. I did. It. <laughs> <laughs> just so we just got out of this thing. conversation, right? So we had asked him to send information. And instead of sending information, he sent a note letter and said he can come back in and give the same spiel again. And I said it would be beneficial. We got information. If we you need send this outreach guy? information. No, I don't think so. It's just yeah. outreach he, opportunity. And he was. I mean, we weren't sure how to go about it. We weren't sure what right. we could actually do. You know, it is amazing. I mean, it would be nice if you got if everybody did it, but we couldn't tell people. I have a little, yeah, and that's why little, we reached out police to there. request the information or brochures or something so that we could maybe mail it out. So some of these towns down the Cape that we're doing, we could we could follow it. Right. Their leadership was, yeah. But I, it's funny because I have a little, I walk a couple of dogs for neighbors occasionally, and, and oh, it's amazing. Yeah, I, I use, use one leash for one hand, so I'm aware of the, do I'm aware of the, uh, you never know of the, of the, uh, you can read? Yes, I can read. The dogs can read too, the ones that I, uh, that's a, that's one of the things that that I supply that they have to have. The dogs have to be the have to carry their own poop bags too. But the basically, it's amazing. You go by one house on the lawn, it's perfectly green. You go to the next house, it's brown. Mm -hmm. And you know, I wonder how much nitrogen is going in there, going into the street, going down into the sewers. But I mean, the drains. We don't have sewers, but the drains. But that's it's a natural river. Yeah, into the watershed. Oh, my God, the tap in my house. It's crazy. Anyway, we're off topic. We generally don't do this. I just want to no, we pass do. along we to you. No, no, we do this all the time. Yes. But yeah. not, usually we have more people complaining. The something also put on the same agenda with the uh, 
fishing when it's more formalized, is proposing to burn the brush piles at Bower Springs this winter. So during the burning period, where we can get a permit, I talked to the chief about what that process is, who would still have to apply for a burn permit. Um, so do you wait till the snow on the ground, or just the wet? No, it's in I March, I think. It's in March, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, just safety it's reasons. A, yeah, it's a big fire. Yeah, um, so what we would do is, before winter, we'd ask um, Jim Henderson to move the pile to the center of the field so that it's away from the tree line and away from other brush that may be in the edges there. Um, That's actually a good idea. But that forward. would be on the next agenda. Yeah. Yeah. So just put it the button here. Yeah. That's good. All right. I promise I won't. No, it's perfectly fine. Yeah, it's it work. We're way ahead. Uh, any outstanding items? Anyone? All right. Uh, in that case, I'd like to make a motion that we officially uh, close the Tuesday, October 15, 2019 meeting of the Bolton Conservation Commission. Second. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> all, all those in favor? Yeah. Aye. 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 Aye.